Hey, what's up, everybody? Travis here after a pretty long hiatus. Smoking my um, K. Woody Super Grain 11 Billiard with um, some Peter Stokeby peaches and cream. And I apologize, I've actually already filmed this intro to this video. However, uh, I did it on a new camera, and I'm struggling right now to figure out how to get the video off of that camera. Um, so I'm not going to mess with it right now, because I want to get this video put together and put up for you. Uh, it's been forever since I've made a video. I taught a class this summer that just enveloped almost all of my time. I'm teaching again this fall at the University of Iowa, and... We had our first week of classes, but it's a little less hectic and a little less chaotic than it is in the summer. So... I had some time here on Labor Day weekend. I've been working on things, and one of the things I'm excited to talk to you about and show you today is I have carved my very first pipe. Uh, so I had, this all started, I had a couple of stems left over from purchasing uh, from um, Pipe Makers Emporium. I think it's pipemakers.org. Because I don't have the tools to turn acrylic or turn vulcanite, so I purchased those stems. I had a couple left over, and I thought, hey, maybe I'll try to make a pipe that fits those stems. So I purchased a couple of Evachon blocks like this. Actually, the other one, uh, this is kind of more for a straight pipe. I'm sorry, a bent pipe. Uh, the one I used was for a straight pipe. As you'll see, my pipe is a straight pipe. And uh, I purchased them from Tim West. All right, from, I think it's jhlow.com or jhlowbriar.com. But anyway, um, I purchased them from Tim. He's a wonderful person to work with. And about this point in my video is where I get cut off on my other camera. So I'm going to stop here and uh, continue on with the rest of the filming. I'll see you guys then. So anyway, I was talking about the Ebishon Briar from Tim West. Great guy to work with. And anyway, I, I got the piece. And I kind of had in mind what I wanted to do even before I got the, the piece of Briar. I know that a lot of pipe makers will say they, they don't really decide until they get into it. Well, I'm, I have limited number of tools. And so I wanted... I was inspired, I guess I'll say that. Uh, I wanted to do something that was kind of like a freehand, kind of like a Dublin, kind of inspired from the uh, IMP Meerschaum makes a pickaxe shape. I know that Jay has done his um, Sutliff private stock reviews in that, and the Wandering Recluse had one, among other people too, but those are the two that come to mind right now. And anyway, that was kind of my inspiration. I have no name for this pipe. Um, and I don't know if I'll give a name to it, but anyway, uh, let me show you my workspace and, and what I did, and I'll walk you exactly through it. I'll talk you about talk to you about the perfections and imperfections of the system. So let's go take a look at my little workspace here downstairs. So the majority of the cuts I made were with this bandsaw. All right, I don't have any lathe or anything like that, so uh, I drew out on the uh, pipe, and you'll be able to see that in the pictures here in a little bit, kind of the shape I wanted to do, and um, then I made most of the initial cuts with the bandsaw. I did my secondary shaping with the Dremel tool, alright, not this attachment, that was a little buffing attachment, it was with uh, one of these rough sanding attachments, like that. So that helped me smooth things out a little bit. And then I sanded the living daylights out of it uh, for quite a while. <clears throat> and then um, this is a drill press that I used to drill the uh, chamber and drill the uh, draft hole and drill the kind of the, the, the inset for the, the tenon of the stem to fit in. So um, I used that. It it really wasn't the right size, and I didn't have the right drill bits to do it easily, so I free-handed the drilling quite a bit. I just held the pipe block in my hand, and it actually turned out pretty nice. Um, I just didn't have any good clamp setting uh, for this. And after all of that, I did uh, rustication on it, but partly because I had the idea ahead of time that I was going to rusticate it, and that worked out fine because there were some imperfections, some pits. I'm not the kind of person that would fill them. If I wanted to leave it smooth, I would have just done that and left the imperfections. Uh, but I kind of already 
like I said, had it in my mind that I was going to do rustication. So, for rustication, I used um, this Dremel tool, or excuse me, uh, this Dremel bit. Turn around here, and um, I practiced on some pieces of wood, putting that in the Dremel tool, and I just felt like there wasn't a lot of good control, and I didn't want to lose the control of it. So I actually put the Dremel tool into into the drill press here. And, that's, and then I held the pipe. And what I did was I just kind of, um, well, you'll see it more on the, on the pipe. I just kind of uh, drew it in and touched it on the surface over and over and over again, hundreds of and hundreds of times, and, and gave a pretty nice rusticated effect. I, I found upon doing some researches that there is no uh, set way to do rustication. Probably just about everybody does it differently. Some people use Dremel tools, some people use homemade tools that they just um, put together themselves. It's pretty interesting once you get into it. I also found that there's quite a bit of secrecy in the pipe making world where um, especially professional pipe makers there's nothing out there about how they do things and, and I understand that there's trade secrets but uh, for those of us that are hobbyists that just would like to try it out um, there's a lot of guessing and just jumping in you know saying okay this is how I'm gonna do it and hope it works. So, anyway, afterwards, after I got all the rustication and all the sanding done, I used this Phoebings or Phoebings leather die. All right, I had black and tan. Those were the two colors I used. And I applied that stain with um, a pipe cleaner. that I'd seen uh, some people on YouTube do that, and it worked out perfect. It, it was just a small... Uh, contact, it was easy to control, that way the stain didn't go where I didn't want it to. Uh, when that was all finished, I buffed it out uh, with um, Tripoli and the white diamond uh, polish, and then I read a lot about rusticated pipes were very difficult to wax with carnauba wax because the wax gets left in, and they suggested this kind of the Halcyon 2 wax, that's not what this is, but it's kind of a carnauba wax polish, like it's a uh, it has wax in it, but also some emulsifier, so it's easier to spread. Uh, and you don't need to use the hard carnauba wax like this, which is basically like a brick. So, I'm going to set the pipe down. It's gone out. So what I did instead was use uh, a very thin coating, again applied with the um, pipe cleaner, of clear shellac. Now, some of you may uh, tell me, that's horrible, Travis, that's, you're going to seal off the pipe, it's not going to be able to breathe. Um, th the way I say, see it is that my research showed that there's about 50% of people that say, don't use shellac, and 50% of the people that say, it's absolutely fine. Um, this isn't lacquer, this isn't a, a heavy varnish, it's not a polyurethane. Um, this is a very thin, it's a natural material. And so I, my understanding is that it breathes easier than polyurethane or varnishes do. Um, we'll see. I mean, that's, that's what it's going to come down to. We'll see how it goes. <clears throat> All right. Um, so I think at this point, uh, if you have any questions on what I did, definitely I, I'd be interested in talking to you about it. Uh, I'll show you the pipe here in a second. But right now I'm going to stop and show you the pictures, kind of put them in succession of, of how the pipe came along. You'll be able to see the cutting to the shaping, to the sanding, and rustication, and then the final product. So, uh, we'll stop here, and I'll see you back in a second. Here is uh, the unveiling of the pipe. I don't have anything fancy here, so uh, let's just pull it across here. All right, I can't even tell what you guys are seeing, if it's in the shot or not. All right, hopefully it is. Okay, so here's the pipe. All right, so twist it around for you. I have uh, Carnuba wax the smooth portions. All right, so I didn't shellac those. I only shellac the uh, rustication. Right, the rusticated parts. I don't know if you can tell that or not, if you can tell the difference between the shellac 
and uh, the Carnuba wax. I left a spot for me to sign my name or stamp it if I ever do that, but I don't have any uh, plans to do that anytime soon. But as you can see, it sits nicely. Um, the stem does touch at the back, so it sits in both places. Um, I hope you can notice, and I did this for on purpose, because when I started this, without a lathe, I knew that there was not going to be any chance for me to just shape it absolutely perfect on my first shot. I wasn't going to kid myself. Um, so I went in with this plan that instead of trying to make a perfectly round top or perfectly shaped top, what I wanted is something that I'll say is ergonomic. I find myself liking to grasp the bowl of the pipe. And you'll see here as I show you as I'm holding the pipe like this, um, the shape of the pipe is nice to just wrap my hand around and just fits really well like this. Alright, so that's one thing I like. The other thing you'll notice, and I don't mind uh, talking about this, I'm not trying to hide anything, so let's see if I can direct the light. You might be able to see down at the bottom, there's a hole in the very bottom of my chamber. That's because the only drill bit I had that was wide enough to drill the chamber was a spade bit for drilling um, uh, like uh, holes into doors and things like that. So. Uh, I have a spade bit set, but no chamber bit, and I don't have any regular drill bit that uh, is significantly large enough for a pipe chamber. And I don't really see any uh, problem for this. I could see where pipe juice or, or tobacco juice or whatever might settle in that hole. I don't foresee it being a problem. I'll just dab it out at the end with a pipe cleaner. Um, if it gurgles or does anything like that really badly, um, then I, I expect that I'll be able to just keep it tipped forward and it won't be a problem. But if it's a problem, that's all right. I'll deal with it as it comes and we'll just use plenty of pipe cleaners. But I'm pretty happy with it. I have a 7 eighths of an inch chamber, or yeah, tobacco chamber drilled, and it's a 5 30 seconds um, draft hole um, drilled. And I <laughs> didn't take any specs. I think it's about two, um, maybe... A, Two and a half to two and a, somewhere between two and a quarter and two and a half inches uh, in height, and then it's also about uh, one and seven eighths inch uh, deep tobacco chamber. So it's a it's a hefty sized bowl. It's probably one of my bigger bowl pipes. I purposely got a bigger block of briar so that I had room to make mistakes. Uh, so if something wasn't right, I could cut down, cut into it more, and and still be okay. So uh, this is my first shot. Uh, I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts on it. Um, and I'll end the video here with uh, a, uh, just a selection of some pictures, some still photos of the pipe. So, hope you guys are having a wonderful Saturday. Enjoy your Labor Day.